Hi, I'm Steve Marchena at GuitarVideoChannel.com and today we're going to be talking about sweep picking. Sweep picking is a very popular guitar picking technique for the right hand, but it's not the most popular. The most popular is alternate picking. And in order to understand sweep picking, let's start by talking about alternate picking. The idea with alternate picking is you pick down, then you pick up, then you pick down, then you pick up. And every time you're going to pick a new note, you change the direction of your pick. Uh, so it's alternate picking down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Sweep picking, you're still alternating down and up, but when you're going to cross strings and you're moving uh, towards the floor with the downstroke, you use that same downstroke to play the next string as well. And you can play up to five or six strings with one downstroke. You hear them all get picked, but you only moved your hand once. And then coming back up, you can, again, you can hit five to six strings. Uh, the most um, the most obvious example of this technique is when you do cross uh, you know five or six strings and you play something like a multi octave triad arpeggio. The idea again is so I'm going here. I'm going down, up, 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 up. And I'm not really picking up each time. It's just one. Today on, we're going to work on uh, arpeggios just crossing three strings, though. So we get this type of sound. <laughs> to get started with this technique, we're going to mute the strings with our left hand and pick the three thinnest strings um, with one downstroke. We're going to go the G string, the B string, the high E string. Like that. So down. Then we're going to come back and pick the same strings with an upstroke the E string, the B string, and the G string. So we go down, up, down, up. To get the left hand involved. Talk about finger order. We're going to go ring, middle, pointer. We're going to play the 12th fret of the G string, the 11th fret of the B string, and the 10th fret of the high E going ring, middle, pointer. Then we sort of reverse the pattern, the little X we're making. Ring finger on the 12th fret of the high E, middle finger on the 11th fret of the B, and pointer finger on the 10th fret of You don't want to hold start combining arpeggios. We'll start that first shape that was just going ring, middle pointer. It's actually like a G minor 13th arpeggio. First we'll play example one, then we'll play that first arpeggio. We play a pattern on different strings. Uh, 
the next variation that we'll get into, um, we're going to go pinky, pinky middle pointer. We'll start on the 15th fret of the G string with the pinky, and the middle on the 13th fret of the B string, and the pointer finger on the 11th fret of the high E. That's one down stroke. Then pinky finger on the 15th fret of the high E, middle finger on the 13th fret of the B. That's uh, example two. All right, our final variation, um, the diminished arpeggio. We're going to go back to the ring middle pointer configuration where we're going to stretch the pointer. We'll play the 11th fret of the G string, the 10th uh, fret of the B string, then the 8th fret of the high E string, going ring middle then 11th fret of the high E, 10th fret of the B, 8th fret of the G string with one up stroke. So that's the diminished arpeggio. Cool thing about the diminished arpeggio, it's a symmetrical pattern. So you can move it up or down the neck three frets and it just inverts itself. It's basically the same chord that it's playing. So example three. If we play examples one, two, and three in a row like that, and then play the open G string and G power chord, we get... Thank you. 